You may have come from my video where I do a comparison on multiple different mini PCs from different brands and kind of look at how they compare to one another, values, form factor, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this video here is not about that. This video here is about reviewing the B-Link SCR7, which is their, I guess, their flagship, I would kind of call right now. This one here has a 7840HS processor, which is the same, which is actually going to have the same integrated graphics that you're going to get in a Lenovo Legion Go or ROG Ally. Technically, it should outperform it because it's the HS variant rather than the U variant. The U variant and those don't go to the same wattages as this. Let's open this one up here. This one is by far the most expensive of all of these on my desk here, but again, I did get a decent price on it. I did buy it through Amazon. I don't have any affiliations with any of these companies. I don't have any sponsorships with any of these companies. I bought all of these on my own. So I've actually been getting uh, some people who are buying. I've been having some of you guys shop through my Amazon links. I'll put an Amazon link to the video description below to this, if it's good. If it sucks, I won't. Uh, but I'll put a link down below. Um, if you shop through my Amazon links, I get some commission um, from Amazon, not from B-Link. I have no affiliation with them. Um, which has actually been very helpful for me. People have been using that recently from time to time. And um, like I said, I have no sponsorships. Uh, you get this nice little charger here. Well, big charger here. Uh, oh, this is a Magna one. This is cool. This is different than the other one. Ooh, this has a MagSafe style thing on it. Okay, so now we're taking a look at the inside. Uh, basically, I just took out a bunch of screws. Uh, you can see I did have to get like a little thin one because my thicker bit didn't work. So I basically just took out some screws. Da, 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 da. Uh, they are like randomized screws. Uh, you can see up here, there's four different sizes of screw. Uh, involved with this, at least just this plastic uh, top piece. So uh, record what you're doing. I'm not too worried because I have a the second one back there. I can kind of model it after, after. Uh, but I started taking them out and I mixed them up. So anyway, so I took that out there. Um, this is where you can put on the older models. Um, you get like a SATA thing there. Here it's M.2. Yeah, so the M.2 kind of thing gets tucks in there. That's the port there. So just be very careful because if you ever take this apart, you could disconnect your M.2. Uh, so that's that there, that's the fan, the little baby fan, um, and the power, this is the power, that's the power to the unit, so be careful with that. Uh, the second M.2 is here, the first M.2 is here, uh, crucial, yeah, it's a crucial drive, um, so that's nice, it just doesn't have a thing on it, so that's crucial. Crucial memory, so nice, uh, fifth, this is fast memory too, 5600 megahertz. This is a Gen 4 drive, uh, doesn't have DRAM, I don't think it has DRAM, but it's a, it's a kind of Crucial's mm, Gen 4 fast drive. So it should run around 5,000 megabytes a second. That's a good drive. Uh, yeah, there's no other screws. That's one, two, three, four, five. And this, okay, so I'm actually gonna push from here rather than pull, because pulling may pull off a component, whereas if you push, uh, that's less likely. Let's move the camera up slightly. Okay, so that's the cooling unit. Um, similar to the other ones that they have, there's a lot of copper in there. Um, and then you have your grill up here, copper grill, a lot of metal, and a nice fan on that too. So that's uh, nice, this kind of more modern curved style fans. Pretty thick too, that's like a centimeter thick, the actual fan itself. That's more than a centimeter thick there, that amount of copper there. So there's a lot of copper here. Okay, let's have a look at some programs. I noticed there's like some actually missing. So like it doesn't have Microsoft Paint, I just installed this. Um, it wasn't on here before, which is interesting, because uh, I wanted to, you know, just grab like a screenshot showing, I'm just looking for malware in that, because I heard reports of, or I watched reports, of uh, YouTubers and other people finding um, malware on these computers. Uh, mini PCs, not B-Link specifically, it was a different brand, but uh, I'm just checking to be sure. But that wasn't on there, which is interesting. And the Microsoft Store isn't on here, which is interesting. So you'd have to uh, get it, which is, because I'm going to do a Cinebench run, so I'm going to have to get like, I'm going to have to come in here and get... Uh, this may install it. I don't know, like I hit the Windows thing. And this is how I got Paint. I clicked on here and Paint did install. So maybe that is how you do it. You click like that. And then like that. Normally you'd think there would be a bar going across, but I don't seem to doesn't seem to be doing anything. So we'll just give it a sec. Maybe that is how you get it after all. And there we go. 4K ultra wide, 75 hertz. So yes, it does do... Uh, very high refresh rates over very high resolutions. This is not 4K, this is 4K ultra wide. So if you do need crazy high refresh rates or crazy high resolutions, just get yourself a DisplayPort cable and you'll be fine. Okay, now we're just running some Cinebench here. And uh, I just wanna check the noise here. So I'm gonna let it run for a while. 
Is it on? Yeah, the fan is very quiet. Um, let's come back here and... Uh, Yeah, very, very quiet. Let's give it another like minute or two. We'll come back and maybe it will get noisier. Okay, we've done a full couple minutes so far, so it's not going to get any noisier, obviously. No thermal throttling, like not even close. We're doing very well on temperatures there. I mean, that big monster fan there sitting right on top of the CPU, uh, we're not going to have any issues. So uh, more than up the t to the task of keeping this thing nice and cool to and here's a look at these sentiment scores. Once we did the runs, you can see here that we ended up with approximately 16,000. That's about what you'd expect with the CPU here. I've tested the CPU many times in high-end gaming machines and thinner laptops as well. Uh, this is pretty much as good as you're gonna get. Okay, now I'm doing my port test. So the front one appears to be uh, just basically a USB uh, 10 gigabit per second or whatever, you know, it's getting uh, around 500 to 1000 megabytes a second, so it's about 10 gigabit per second. Uh, this one here is a USB 4. Uh, you can see here I'm just in the process of doing a test right now, and we're getting USB 4. Here's a look at the storage speeds here. So we can see on the front here the USB A port is giving us around 670 or so and 1000 on right, so that's actually a 10 gigabit port. You can see here that both of the back USB C's are actually USB 4, so you're going to get around 3000 megabytes a second transfer, so excellent there. For some reason, writes are slower, but that's my actual enclosure, my SSD. Uh, that's fine. Uh, and then the internal NVMe, as expected, is around 5,000 megabytes a second or so, so a Gen 4, pretty standard Gen 4 drives. So overall, you're going to get really good speeds in the storage in this device here. You get really good ports on the back, obviously, USB 4, good speeds on the front as well, and good speeds internally. And Wi-Fi was pretty quick on this here. You can see we're getting around 400 or so. It can actually go faster, 500 or 600. It just depends on what my internet decides to do that day. So nice, fast Wi-Fi there. And I have gigabit ethernet, and you can see here we're getting gigabit speeds. My internet can only go that fast, so that's as fast as it's capable of going. And I did malware bytes test here. Absolutely nothing on the system that was detected. And I did a window scan as well, nothing detected. So nice, clean system. And this is where things get interesting. I've seen lots of people talk about mini PCs and, you know, they, they do a little bit of, oh, you know, can do some emulation, do some gaming and that. But, you know, they don't really push home the narrative about some of these mini PCs. I mean, we're getting to the point now where we're working with 780M iGPU graphics from AMD. These are significantly faster than the Steam Deck. I mean, if you look at people who do comparisons between the Steam Deck, the ROG Ally, and the Legion Go, I've done them. Uh, the Legion Go and the ROG Ally are actually like gaming devices, right? They're very, very capable of playing games, AAA games at reasonable settings. And, you know, the Gamers Nexus just recently did a video where they talk about the Steam Deck versus the ROG Ally, and, you know, the, the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck and the Legion Go, you know, sometimes the Steam Deck does okay in comparison, but, you know, that's when you're in like a little handheld mode on battery. When it comes down to it, those use the 7840U processor, whereas this is the 7840HS processor. Basically the same, but this has more watts. So you can do considerably more wattage to that CPU. You can see um, up here, you know, we're getting 54 watts to that CPU there, or APU, however you want to break it down. Basically the chip, the APU chip is getting 55 watts or so, 54 watts, much more than the 7840U can do in general. It just doesn't do 50 watts, 55 watts. And so as a result, this becomes a AAA gaming uh, device, right? Like you're not looking at 4K, right? You're not looking at 4K Ultra and Starfield, but you're going to be able to play the newest games at 1080p at reasonable settings. You're going to be able to play slightly older games, you know, that are maybe 2021, 2020 games at 1440p. But you can see here I'm playing at 1080p medium. This is not low or anything like that, and I just have a little bit of, the, uh, of uh, FSR on, just, you know, the lightest FSR. And we're getting almost 60 FPS, 54 FPS as the average, and 28 as the 0.0% lows, right? Very, very capable. You know, you could use the built-in iGPU, or you could throw an RTX 2060 into an enclosure and hook it up. I was going to do a 7900 XTX, but it actually wouldn't fit in there. So here we are in Baldur's Gate, same scene. Uh, we're at 4K now, though, rather than 1080p. Um, same medium setting, I can play with that how I want, but we're at 4K medium. And we are at, uh, just balanced at DLSS, just because I'm at 4K, so why not? 
and uh, 85 to 90, 100 FPS at 4K, sure, why not? Like this CPU can pull, we can see right here, it's pulling 45 watts up in the corner there. Um, so it's definitely, you know, a respectable wattage there. And then when you throw in a 2080 on top of that, you know, the CPU can pull its own weight here. Like it, it'll be fine, right? The CPU we can see here is only at 38%, about 300 US dollars for this kind of setup right here. And you can use USB 4s. There's actually two USB 4s, right? There's not just one. So I have the one USB 4 right here going into the Razer enclosure, which is giving me my display, which allows a second USB 4, which is right here, which is running my game. Uh, 3,500 megabytes a second, transfer speeds on that for reads, and I'm playing at 4K. Good, in a, in a pretty demanding title. This is a benchmark. So, I mean, this is this is a very capable little gaming machine as it is. I mean, I don't need to get into emulation and do all that kind of stuff. I mean, it can, obviously, right? A very, very capable CPU and a capable iGPU, but you can do AAA modern gaming on this device here without any problems, and if you're don't care about gaming, you can obviously also do some serious processing because the 7840HS and it's a very capable, you get lots of ports, two USB 4 ports, enough that I can hook up an eGPU and also a dongle there that has USB 4 capabilities. Very, very capable. The device is running nice and quiet. It's not noisy by any means whatsoever. It's running nice and cool. It's a fantastic little device here. And they took care of me. So there you go, uh, SER7, fantastic. Awesome, awesome, awesome device. I don't know what other competitors you know are all out there, but the price on this I think is fair. The quality is outstanding, and the performance is also outstanding. And um, the biggest thing is for me, you know, the price is not going to break the bank on this one.